Hey, welcome back to Views. Today I've got a boat. It's pretty similar to everything else that I've ever done, except for I thought that maybe I'd pay a little more attention to showing you what I do in some very specific areas. So uh, here you go. All right, I've got a little heavy cut on here and I'm gonna tackle the shoulder. Figure the sun's out and you can see it. Might be a good place to do this. So here we go. Slow speed, get it going. Now, I don't know if you were watching or paying attention, but as I'm doing this, I'm following the lines of the boat. In other words, the curve, the piece here kind of goes down like this. So when I wipe this off, hopefully the reflection that you're going to see, if there is a swirl, that swirl line follows the line of the boat, meaning if your eyes here, the line is here. If your eyes here, the line is here. If your eyes are here, the line is here. So hopefully I'm not whistling Dixie here and this is actually going to look the way I said it's going to look. Now this is heavy cut, so you are going to see a little bit of a swirl because it was done on a curved surface using a round spinning wheel, and that inherently causes problems. So you're going to see some little star effects, maybe a little hologram here. I'll wiggle you back and forth. You can follow that line. See how it follows the shape of the boat? That's what you want. I mean, if you're going to leave a swirl, it might as well look like part of the boat, right? Okay, so if that's the first step with a little bit of heavy cut, some of you who've been watching for a little while might already know that the very next step is going to be perfected EXAC. So let me flip my pad over so I'm not using the gritty side from the heavy cut, and I'll get into the perfected EXAC, and we'll basically do the exact same things, and what you'll see is that line, while it might be like this long, might shrink down to that, and that's pretty good. And then the very next step is to use a random orbital polisher with a soft foam pad after we clean it and strip it, and by just putting on the polish or the wax or whatever you're going to put on there, that will clean up any swirls that you left in there. So I've got my pad flipped over. I've got my perfected EXAC. I'm going to give it a quick little shaky shake just because, you know, things settle. And then I'm going to put this on the pad just like I did before. Perfected EXAC. Don't need too much. It's not a huge section. But I do want enough on a dry day like this, especially with the sun directly above. I do want enough on the pad and the surface that I have some time to work it so that it breaks down all the way. All right, here we go.
<laughs> By the way, everything's the same. So if I'm doing a big section, I spread the product out, I hit my edges, and then I work in the middle. This is no different. Spreading the product out, I'm gonna hit my edges, wherever they may be, and then I'm gonna work my middles. see if it looks any better fingers crossed everybody let's hope so oh goodness sakes there we go that's literally good enough for the girl i date she doesn't care i showed her a shiny boat once and she goes well that's a it's a pretty picture I'm like yeah yeah it's a pretty picture she said what does it look like when it's when it's done I go, that is done she goes no what did it look like before? I showed her the picture. She goes, it's the same. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> We're done explaining this to you. Anyway, she has some qualities that I don't. And so uh, it's a nice little, it doesn't really matter. All right, there you go. There's one shoulder done. I'll do another one. All right, that looks about safe. The camera's tilting a little bit, but you know, whatever. So I know this says uh, marine compounding and finishing material. It is not. This is heavy cut. I just had an old bottle and we had some gallon jugs that we were using uh, on occasion some of the heavy cut bottles broke so we'd use that anyway here we go same as before a little heavy cut spreading around hitting my edges and then dialing everything back in and no i'm not taking off that decal you're right i should but i'm not gonna it wasn't my call
And I probably shouldn't have to explain anything else to you guys after watching that first part. So maybe I won't. I'll just wipe this off and you can see what it looks like. And then you'll assume, oh, next he's going to use perfected EXAC. To which you'll be right. Yay. All right. Flipping the pad over to a non-gritty side. Adding perfected EXAC. And love and life. Dun, 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 dun. Pink. All right. Clean side of the pad. Buffer works. I know because I just hit the trigger and tested it, which I always do because I'm a detailer. A little bit of the old perfected EXAC. Spread this out, hit our edges, do some cross cutting, level out, and take care of the middles. All right? Pretty simple stuff. Spreading. And if you're still playing along, the next step is, you guessed it, wipe it off and check out what you got. Ooh, look at that reflection. That's an intense little ball of light right there. I'm cool with that. Somebody's got a lifter ticket. Old Volkswagen. All right, very next step is grab the random orbital polisher. Put some, uh, actually, no, you know what? If you're paying attention, you caught me in a lie. The very next step is to strip this, clean it, make sure we like what we see. So let me put you on pause, I'll be right back. Okay, I've brought my stripper. This is not the type of stripper, obviously, we all want and need in our lives, regardless of what my girlfriend tells me. She don't know, she don't know. All right, so you see some streaking going on there? Sorry, I bumped the camera. streaking is a result of not getting all the oils off so you see streaking after you've wiped it that's why all right let me put you on pause i'm gonna go do the other side real quick just to be efficient all right well i've got my fire glaze plus ta-da and i have my random orbital polisher and a soft foam pad so very next step put a little bit of this goo onto the pad and work it in and when i say work it in i mean work it in Try to get all these uh, little pores in your gel coat full of stuff, all right? So make sure you're on the slowest setting.
Okay. And just like that, she's now protected. Ta-da. You guys want to see the other side? It's just as boring. All right. Like I said, just as boring. You're not going to enjoy this any more than you did the last one. That'll do. Sorry, I caught on the cord. So there's how you do curved pieces of gel coat. You just have to think a little bit within the geometry of what you're working on, and it's not too hard to leave a swirl-free finish. Anyway, the rest of this boat is going to be just the swim step and transom, and no offense to y'all, but um, it's too hot for me to be taping all this off and doing the work and talking about it and moving the camera around. I really want to get home and have a beer. So I appreciate you showing up. Um, again, beautiful day. Gorgeous scenery. Happy to be alive. Fine, maybe I, maybe I wanted to show you this. So if you haven't seen this before, this is how I tackle the transom and the swim step. Basically, I'm trying to protect the non-skid from the compound and the buffer and make sure that there's a decent delineation between let's say like this little area here that should be shiny gel coat versus this area in here and this area here and I'm, if you haven't figured it out i'm using my shadow hands as the uh, cursor so i've taped off all the non-skid i've also taped off anything that i think is going to interfere with the compound sometimes on these hatches there's a, a hinge and so i've taken a little tape put that over that so that the hinge because it's not stainless steel or at least it's not the best stainless steel sometimes has an interaction with the compound the aluminum oxides the titanium dioxides and it just spreads that dark nasty stuff all over um, your shiny gel coat which it's not terribly difficult to get off but when it gets in the non-skid sometimes that gets kind of hard to get out so the next step is to take out all these little snaps and i've kept them up there so i don't lose any um, and what I'm going to do is compound the big areas. I'll even compound uh, some of the, the stuff like up in here. This is all going to get a little bit of compound. I'm not going to be able to get perfection out of this just because it's too small. What I can do though is knock down all the, uh, the oxidation to the point where I can use uh, a cleaner wax to follow up and it'll create the illusion that everything I did on the outside of the boat 
also got done here. Now I can take it up a notch or two uh, down here on this little section right here, all the way around. I can make that look absolutely outstanding. And then I can do the exact same thing out here on this outer edge. So realistically, you, it's hard to take an older boat, especially when it's got some oxidation in like these little corners, the stuff in here, your wheel's gonna have a hard time spinning around and getting in there. So what you can do is where the wheel fits, you can use it, right? Like around this area. And you can maybe even get it up underneath this little handle and you can touch some of this right in here. But the little areas right in these little corners here, this stuff here, and there's obviously some over there, those are gonna be a little bit hard to get with a buffer wheel and you're never gonna get perfection uh, out of your buffer in these areas. What you can do, however, since I already have a drill here, I'll use one of these Flitz metal polish balls for like doing uh, wheels. Now I've put a little piece of uh, uh, wire conduit around here just so I can hold this while this thing spins and it doesn't burn my hand up. And with this, you can get into some of these tighter spots. Now if you can't get into there with that, I also have a little guy here and this is just a, a foam, squishy, soft microfiber, I don't know, you can call it a, let's just call it a thing. Anyway, this can get up in here and do some do some work. And again, it's just all kind of bringing it together so that your eyes kind of perceive that everything was done to absolute perfection. In reality, it's not. It's all illusion. That being said, it's a nice illusion, and I'm not ashamed of it. So until boat manufacturers decide to build boats that take into account the 20-year afterlife, uh, people are going to be trying to clean them up and make them look pretty, Eh, you just do what you got to do. So if you can't get in there, don't get frustrated. Just think your way through it and, you know, work around the problem. Anyway, my next uh, thing to do is get up here with the buffer and some compound and start making it ugly and dusty. And then uh, once that's done, I'll clean it, put some wax on it. Or, like I said, in the areas up in the corners, I'll just add some cleaner wax. And I'll buff that out and try to blend it all together so that when you look at it and you just glance over it, all you see is, wow, that looks great. And as an example, in the next uh, section of this video, I will show you what that looks like. So uh, hang out for a bit. Mm, so will I. I'll be right back. Okay, well, the compounding's been done. The waxing's been done. I've even buffed it off. Uh, but I wanted to show you a couple things because I often don't tell you a couple things. Uh, one thing is I'd like to point out, you see how my tape down here? It's one piece. I just curved it. Not only does it resist peeling up when your buffer is spinning and it catches an edge, um, which can kind of, you know, derail your activities. Um, I also layer them in a scallop pattern, you know, one over the top of the other because the wheel is spinning like this, right? So if the wheel spins over the tape like that, no big deal, it's not going to peel it up. The other reason I like to do it in one big piece is because at the end of a job, it's sometimes fun just to, just to peel the boat. And if you don't have to bend over and peel off 2,000 pieces of tape and you only have to worry about, you know, a couple, it's just better, I think. Makes me feel like I'm a professional if I can do it in a few pieces as opposed to many, many, many pieces. But now you have some idea of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to put this on pause. I'll be right back. All right, last two little pieces. So as an example, this is how I like to pull up my tape. Okay, that was almost perfect. There we go. Throw this away. All right, so now you can maybe get an idea of why it's kind of cool to tape this off. You'll see the little glisten from the shine, the reflection of the sun, but then you see where the non-skid is and it has no reflection. So it indicates to somebody, hey, somebody waxed my boat. And they cared about making uh, less of a mess than most people. Now, if you think that this looks good, I appreciate it. Give you an idea of what it used to look like. There's that.
nothing special, but it's a nice touch. All right, so I have one more little piece to go. I've already taped it off. I'm not going to show you how this goes. It's compounding. It's a buffer. A little bit of time, then you clean it and inspect it, and then you wax it and inspect it, and then you go home and have a beer. Or if you're already home, have a beer. All right, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Actually, no. Well, okay, I might. I'll, I'll be So back. there's another reason that I sometimes spend a little extra time on these swim steps and whatever. Partly because, yeah, I mean, I'm doing the rest of the boat, but partly because this is the first thing that the owner's going to see. So if I can blow their minds with the very first step on the boat, then I'm cool with that. Another thing I'd like to point out is on occasion when you take off the tape, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's going to be a little difficult, but right in the line where the tape was covering versus where the gel coat was, there's a little bit of compound that sometimes gets in there. If you're smart, you'll clean that up before it has a chance to dry and become a semi-permanent part of the boat. It doesn't take much, just a little finger rubbing. And then usually there's some marks on the outside of the interior of the section you're working on where the tape was. Just because stuff dusts, spatters, compound, whatever. So you just clean that up and now she's ready to get washed. Anyway, I appreciate very much that you guys spent the time uh, watching this garbage. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, ask them. I shall answer. If you have no questions, cool. That means I did my job right. Anyway. Thanks so much. Uh, I'll have another video for you as soon as I get another project that's worth it. All right. Cheers. Oh, there you go. Just as boring and stupid as all the other videos, but again, I appreciate that you came out. So like, subscribe, have a beer.